Hey, it's Jeremy from OpticHouse.com. So there's a topic that I intended to touch on back when I was doing my thumbnail videos, and I never got to it, so I'm going to bring it up now. And the thing I've been thinking about was the connective tissue of storytelling. You don't see it as much in my layouts as you do in the thumbnails, but in my, uh, in my, thumb, in my thumbnail phase... I have a tendency when I'm blocking out a page to figure out the last shot of the page, the first shot of the page, and then move forward or move basically from both ends towards the middle. And my thinking behind this approach, my approach is always changing. I'm always experimenting with it. And a lot of it is just about the way that I tend to process story in my mind. And for this particular aspect, a big part of the processing it is that I, when I tend to draw, do figure drawing classes, I'm not that great at proportion. The minute that I start drawing a figure, if I'm not paying attention to it in terms of having a definite how all the different limbs and parts of the human body relate to each other, things go wonky. Limbs are too long, torsos are too short, heads are too big, so on and so forth. The same thing, I think, can happen in a comic book panel, or in a single comic book page, rather. That's actually what I meant. We have so much in our minds when we're telling stories visually. So much detail, so much action, so much emotion. We want to cram it all in. And trying to find the way to fit all the emotional beats of a particular page or particular scene into a page is hard. So by having a definite middle and a definite end, it forces you to say, all right, at its essence, what is this page about? If you were to look at it like an actor coming from a theater background, it'd be like, what is the scene? Why are we doing this? What's transpiring here? What happens and how does it move the story forward? How does it move the characters forward emotionally on whatever journey they're on? So by setting those defined parameters of simply saying, this is the first shot, this is the last shot. Maybe not of the whole scene, but definitely of the page, because the page is a physical limitation. Then it forces you to say, within this scene, how much space is there to tell story? Does this page end up be that helps dictate whether a page is a nine panel page, you know, nine panel grid, you know, a six panel grid, you know, three or four tiers, a splash page, what have you. Because once you know what your beginning and your end is, then it forces you to break down the next step, which is what do I need in order to get from A to B? What is essential to getting from A to B? And that's beneficial in two ways, because one of it is one of the things is that it allows you to say, all right, do I have room for a little character moment or character joke that I want to tell? And an extra shot just holding on an expression that it gives a little bit of character scene, you know, a little or some flavor of a background. Um, do I have space for all of these things? Because you you know, you need to know how much you can fit in visually, narratively, but also when you break down what are the absolute essentials of that scene, you may decide that these little touches, these little flourishes that you wanted in the comic page might not actually be necessary, and they might actually even detract from the story. I, I don't make any absolutes about what should or shouldn't be in a scene or what's essential to a scene only because... Sometimes meandering, going off the map, you find some magic, you find some gold. You know, like how they have, they talk a lot in manga about how a lot of times, you know, manga storytelling tends to be, instead of, it tends to be moment to moment, or a beat to beat. Meaning like you might have a character, they might turn, look, you know, some leaves blow in the background, and the next thing happens after that. Like you're, you're experiencing these little tiny moments like haiku, haikus. Whereas in Western comic books, you know, particularly in American comic books, it's action to action. Character throws a punch, pulls a trigger, jumps, ducks, whatever, opens a car door, um, takes a glass, of, sips a glass of water. You know, it's literally what is the physical action? Whereas, you know, as opposed to the emotional beat, 
And I think there can be gold in those emotional beats. And I try to, even though I'm doing a comic book that has, you know, a fair amount of action in it, I try to take time to find certain moments that that resonate. That's really the only word for it. Something that it, that makes you feel like there's actually emotion. These characters are experiencing something and feeling something. Because those moments are what give the story life, give the characters inner life. So I won't say absolutely that you should break down what is essential to your scene and throw out everything that is not essential. I don't think that that's an absolute rule. I think it's handy to know what is essential and to try to tell the story with as little extra flourish as possible. But you should be open to what those little moments can be and how they can add to your story. And again, getting down to the essentials lets you know, you know what? I do have room for an extra panel in here of a character, you know, just holding and staring down at the ground contemplatively, contemplatively, however you pronounce it. You know, being able to take little moments for those shots. Once you know what the essentials are, you can really lock in. So, yeah, I, I think about that a lot, and I think of it as connective tissue when I'm thinking about how these, these pieces relate and interrelate to each other. You know, having your beginning point and your end point. I was having a conversation with a really good friend of mine um, a while back. We were talking about writing process in terms of outlining versus seat-of-your-pants writing. And for me, outlining is essential when I write. I need to know where I'm going the same way that I need to know on a comic book page. And I don't think that every writer needs to outline. I think that it depends on the person. I think it depends on the process of what type of storytelling they're doing, um, what genre, and what medium they're telling the story in. I think that all of those things play into whether you should or should not outline. But a lot of that thinking goes into the way I'm thinking when I'm actually laying out a particular comic book page. On a different topic, I'm also still looking at these pages as I'm going through here and doing my, my layouts. It's interesting in the, the same outlining process, I'm going through here now and adding detail to each panel a lot of times when I'm doing these, the layouts, I try to go through and block in the whole page with just stick figures, literally just balls and cylinders and, and cubes and blocks. And I try to do that before I go in and render the facial expressions and anatomical details and backgrounds and such, because it's kind of the same thing as with the other, with the other elements of of the visual storytelling, doing the, you know, putting this structure in this connective tissue. It's like I'm trying to go in there and get that connective tissue, get that skeleton in first, and then put the connective tissue on top of it. You know, kind of anatomically, I look at it sort of like I'm putting in the, the basic skeleton, the framework. That's what the outline is. That's what the stick figures in the in the, the layout phase are. That's what figuring out the beginning and ending points of a page or a scene are, or a whole story. That's the skeleton. You know, I need to have a skeleton on which to put that flesh and blood. That was the thing I was talking to my friend about, is that I was saying, you know, the outline for me is a skeleton, but if you have a skeleton, you've just got a bag of bones. It doesn't do anything. But once you have a skeleton, you can put flesh and blood on it, make it move, breathe, and live. Without the skeleton, the flesh and blood is just a pile of bloody meat. Who the hell wants that? You know, that isn't to say that stories that are not outlined have no skeleton, but that skeleton grows in a much more different, much more organic way, which is why sometimes those stories give you very surprising creatures, creatures you would never have dreamed of if you had to sit down and design them. But as they evolve there on their own on their page, something magical happens. I'm sure at some point in the future, I will experiment with storytelling where I'm not doing any outline at all and just going straight ahead. I don't believe in an absolute for anything. I believe in experimenting and trying different types of storytelling. This is what's working for me right now with this project. But I look forward to, over the course of my career as an artist and a writer, in experimenting with different types of, you know, different processes for writing and coming to the, the final story. Whether it's with outlines, without outline, um, and everything in between. 
That's it for now. Check out my website, OpticHouse.com. If you enjoy these videos, please share them. Also, sign up for my weekly newsletter to get a free digital download and see what else I'm working on. Go be creative.